Scoot. Actually, here, why don't you just turn the camera? Nope. No. That's adjust a silly the, idea. Adjust no. the camera no. a little bit. It's a silly idea. So, silly uh, idea. Okay. I like this steady frame. I like being half in, half out. Yeah. Well, your face is in, so you're good. That's good. That's <laughs> the most important part. Yeah. I like to go half in and half out repeatedly, too, but, you know. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Back to the Mary and Berry Bloops. I like that one too. This is the original one. Blueberry. Shit tons of blueberry and a uh, weed ale, but a, a bunch of blueberry tossed into a nice weed ale, so you get a nice little bit of color mm -hmm. in there. For all you those out there that uh, on this cut, Tim Tim just joined us, so. A magic. I oh. can <laughs> yeah. poof in and poof out. I was going to say, Tim. I don't think they noticed. They, uh, be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's here now. Uh, you know, it I, smells like Costco blueberries, and it's <laughs> off-putting me a little bit. Costco blueberry muffins. It's, that's different. I'm like, it does I was like, smell yes. like blueberries. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's, got yeah. blueberries in it. Yeah, I was so like... <laughs> you see more like the caramelized blueberries that's in the muffins, like yeah. it's like, like kind of sweet crust character. I don't think it's off-putting. I think normal people would just, you know, enjoy a blueberry muffin from Costco. I think that's what we do at Costco is get muffins. Uh, a little bit acidic. You get that from the blueberries. Um, the one thing that I get that's off, it, it, it lingers back with a um, kind of an astringent flavor on the back end. Um, yeah, kind a little of bit. Rolls into like a, a vegetal. Sometimes when you over hop a beer, like have too much plant matter, or if you use a uh, some sort of fruit or vegetable like in the wrong period of time, and you get some like greenness off of it, that's kind of what I got lingering on the back end. Yeah, it might be actually pulling like some tannins or something off the skins. Actually, looking at the can, this looks like it might be uh, not the newest batch. This is something seven of eighteen. So that's the seventh day of some month in the year 2018. So that's as much as we got in terms of what date that was canned on. Uh, I, so. I will say in my other experiences of having this, uh, being <clears throat> on tap currently over at Steady Flow Growler House, uh, the version that's over there has a lot more blueberry to it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so that uh, makes sense. Like this one, maybe that one's more fresh. I think they, they send over fewer yeah. kegs usually than they do cans, and so package isn't always the, the truest determine what a beer is supposed to taste like. Uh, out of all the versions that I have had of this, one thing that I will note about it is it is, it's a hoppy beer. Uh, there is a good amount of actual hop going on inside of it, but more so than what you'd expect for a wheat and especially a fruited wheat beer. Yeah, yeah I think there's a little uh, too much though. Yeah, I think that's, part of, that's part of what's adding to the bittering and the tannin at the, on the ooh, that's a lot of Protein. You just yeah. got some blues in your cups. That's right. <laughs> a little bit of B vitamins there on the bottom end. That's probably going to give you a little extra bite. Uh, right. Maybe part of why there's that bite in the first place. But yeah, the hops are definitely pushing forward a little bit of that extra. extra. Yep. Well, that is yeah. the bloops for you, everyone. It sounds like we may or may not have gotten a pretty old can of this. Um, so yeah. that's our opinion, but fresh batches might be better. Yeah. And although so far, you know, all these are, none of these are undrinkable. All these are pretty damn good. Um, some of them great. And now we have. Something greater, maybe. Hopefully. This Logan takes the longest possible time to get that in front of us. Alright, but I am not going to put that on top of Loop's can. So I need to find a way to get this uh <laughs> What what is the appropriate cuddle name for a work wife? I don't know. Babe. Babe? Boo? Babe? <clears throat> Boo is spelled B U U like uh, Dragon Ooh. Ball Z. Oh yeah. 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 I don't know that's though. That's how you do it. Is that ah. Kobe. Everyone saw that made it. Definitely made it. Straight in the garbage. So let us know Ooh. what you think is the appropriate cuddle name for a work wife. Yes. Also, if you had to rank us in terms of size, who do you think is biggest? Height or weight? So my name's definitely not baby because I'm shoved in the corner. I'm used to He's getting me all wet. <laughs> so this beer, <laughs> I also currently don't know the name of this beer. Block Fisky. Block Fisky. Yes. <laughs> Oh wow, that was really tasty. Oh, Something wow. mysterious happens to Imperial Stout when it rests in a whiskey barrel. Pour gently into a sniffer and let it wrap around you. That, I didn't know it was a blend. I enjoy that. Yeah. More, more beers, especially barrel aged beers, should be blended. There's Absolutely. Some, you make a much better beer. Really good yeah. barrel programs have actual actual whiskey blenders, like actual whiskey former whiskey makers that run their barrel programs, because um, that's what they usually do in whiskeys is they take all the whiskeys that have different flavors and they turn them into the best flavor. Bam! Because they know how to do their stuff. I get a lot of like a dark cracker, like graham cracker. Dark cracker. I'm going to say and it's chocolate. a little, little bit soy to me. Um, like little, chocolate Teddy Grahams. A little yeah. bit, uh, actually, kind of like 
Worcestershire sauce. Mm. And I know I added an extra syllable, but when you're talking about something like that, I get like deep dark chocolate yeah. notes, like like straight up like ninety plus percent cocoa dark oh, chocolate. Oh god, and it feeds into something else. Mm. Wow, it's, it's got a lot going on. It's got a lot. This beer is one of the most <laughs> complex beers I think I've tasted in a year. Uh, comparing to the when we did the Fremont video, when those were like very very cloyingly sweet and a lot oh, yeah, of this this way is, more complex than that. Yeah, this is com more complex and it's way drier as well. And so it's just yeah. it's just a more delicate beer and a beer that you can actually feel good about drinking a whole glass of. You could have a pint of it and then sleep on your bathroom floor. It keeps the dryness. There, there is an impression of sweetness over the top. You get that kind of brown sugar, a little bit of vanilla coming from the mm. bourbon and the oak that makes you think, oh, this is going to be sweet. And then right at the very end, it dries out perfectly. I get a lot of uh, <laughs> like almost single malt character. You know how it has a, that kind of it opens up into a drier whiskey, um, and it really like lends into that barley kind of flavor. Uh, sometimes like with sherry notes and that like dry toast on the on the like on a graham cracker is kind of. I think that's the dominant flavor to me in my mind. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it opens up into vanilla and chocolate and all sorts of other stuff. Yeah, while the middle body still has that richness, still has that sweetness to it, the finish dries into a just straight up coffee note to me. Um, I like, would say like a tobacco coffee mix. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's a really dry, like coffee malt, um, and uh, that's interesting because most of these big beers tend to finish sweet. I can't figure it out. <laughs> Too many flavors hit me. Um, nose is that very much. I think Tim mentioned it earlier. Umami, yeah, sort of a sort of a profile. I think that on first the hit on the palate is umami. I think you get a lot of that yeah. right right on the front. And if you chirp it a little bit, it opens up into like some cherry notes. I get some dark fruit notes when you chirp it a little bit. Um, but yeah, this umami, sherry, whiskey, dark, really Munich-rich Yeah, you get beer. a lot of that kind of dry wood. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's all of it. It's all of it. Delicious. <clears throat> Try to experience uh, these beers in, in multiple ways. I like to I like to take big gulps sometimes. I like to take a lot of small gulps and let them yeah. roll around my palate. I like to chirp some of these beers, which means, like, incorporate some air while you're rolling it across your tongue because that opens up different flavors. Um, there's a lot of different ways to experience these, and you'll never get all the flavors if you don't try all these different tasting mechanisms. Yeah. One thing we have not actually mentioned is the alcohol in this beer, which blows my mind looking at the bottle right now. Do you all see this out there? Check that out. You see what that reads? That is 9.5%, which, yes, it's not a tiny beer by any means, but it's but, not huge either. It, like, for an imperial barrel aged stout, that's like, a small number. That's yeah, on the lower end. Exactly. Like, I, I would have thought that. this thing was yeah. like 13%. Yeah. And okay. that blows my mind, right? Not because of the booziness, but because of the complexity. The that complexity, you with those exactly. Fears. Exactly. It's, yeah. all, it's the complexity of this. And uh, hell yeah. I mean, give me more. And along with that, in the booziness, you, you do get to taste a lot of the good bourbon notes. You get that nice warming, not the, not a burn as it's coming down, but a nice good warming in your belly. Yep. But it doesn't really ever present yep. its alcohol. Yep. Definitely. And I love the fact that I can drink at least three bombers before falling asleep on the floor. I give uh, them two and a half. And that is Black Fisky. Or Black... What is Black, that? Yeah, that, 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 that is Black Fisky from... Yeah, yeah. Black Fisky. Thank you, Rush. Get the block of Fisky. Hurry up. <laughs> Shut your we got, we got stuff to do. Hurry up. Hurry up. Shut your name We got stuff to do. <laughs> and that is Block Fisky from Ordnance Brewing Company and the rest of the beers that preceded, all of which I would say are definitely drinkable, some much better than others. Yeah. And I think that also sums up our Wednesday hump day drinking sesh. Pretty thanks. damn good. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, Tim. And, uh... Nice. We'll see you all next week on Genus Brewing. Like the subscribe button, smash the bell button, and comment on the on the links below. Do what else Peter says. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Oh, and Viva La Beer. <sighs> oh, yeah, that thing. Uh, Viva La Beer. Oh, uh, dilly Dilly. Take it back. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Smash.